Lake Winnipeg. It's the 11th largest freshwater lake in the world. It's playground for generations of Manitobans, home to an important commercial fishery and a critical source of water for hydroelectric power. Hello, I'm Scott Powell of Manitoba Hydro. For 35 years, Manitoba Hydro has regulated the amount of water flowing out of Lake Winnipeg. And for 30 of those years, I've seen the effects of regulation firsthand here at the cottage. I've also seen the aftermath of severe weather and high waves on our and our neighbors' properties. And in 2011, with water levels as high as I've ever seen them, I wanted to know, what exactly is the objective of Lake Winnipeg regulation? How does it work? And are the high water levels we've seen over the last number of years something new or part of a natural cycle? And finally, what exactly is Manitoba Hydro doing to help reduce the levels on Lake Winnipeg? Lake Winnipeg was formed from the remains of Lake Agassiz, an immense glacial lake created at the end of the last ice age. Today, Lake Winnipeg is over 415 kilometers long and covers more than 24,000 square kilometers. The lake collects water from one of the largest drainage basins in North America. From the Rockies in the west, to Lake Superior in the east, and south to the start of the Mississippi watershed. Six major rivers feed the lake, while only one, the Nelson, drains it. The amount of water flowing into Lake Winnipeg can vary dramatically, depending on precipitation and snowfall across the entire basin. At regular intervals, during periods of sustained high inflows to the lake, in 1927, 1950, 1966 and 1974, devastating overland flooding and shoreline erosion occurred in the South Basin. The social and economic costs of these events were huge. Damaged homes, businesses and cottages, massive erosion, and loss of tourism, fishing and other income. Well, the lake has always been viewed as a source of, of great resource for the people around it for, for a multitude of reasons. But it's also been a problem for the people living around the lake because of the erosion and because of high water and wind events. Erosion is driven by wave energy. Now, erosion has many factors that affect it, including the shoreline type, the soil type, the topography, whether there's vegetation on the shoreline, soil moisture. The water level also affects erosion, but erosion is driven by waves. If you didn't have the waves and the energy coming in, then you wouldn't have erosion. So it's been a problem around Lake Winnipeg forever. There's highways north of Gimli that have been rerouted because of erosion, and that happened long before Lake Winnipeg regulation was in place. Public calls for federal and provincial government action to reduce flood impacts around the lake went back to the early 20th century. In the wake of another devastating flood in 1950, the Manitoba government established the Lakes Winnipeg and Manitoba Board to study the issue. Their comprehensive 1958 report concluded that regulation of the lake for flood control purposes alone was impractical and not cost effective at that time. But they did say that regulation of Lake Winnipeg could be a benefit for the development of hydroelectric power sites along the Nelson River. The Nelson River has long been recognized as a valuable source of hydroelectric power. To develop this source was the challenge. With the start of construction on the Kettle Generating Station in the mid-1960s and another high water event on Lake Winnipeg in 1966, the thought of regulating Lake Winnipeg for the combined purposes of flood control, improved navigation, and hydroelectric purposes finally began to gain prominence as a realistic solution. At that point, Manitoba Hydro was looking to the north, to Churchill River Diversion, to meet the needs, the increasing power needs of, of, of Winnipeg and southern Manitoba and all of Manitoba. And they determined that they were going to build a high-level Churchill River Diversion project. 
Now those of us who have been around long enough to remember will remember that in the late 1960s the high level diversion to the Churchill River was quite controversial and in fact it was one of the issues that caused the government of the day to fall. So starting in 1969 Manitoba Hydro had to go back to the drawing board and uh, to say if we can't do the high level Churchill River diversion what is the best way to proceed? So after a couple of years of studies which were quite intense uh, we came to the conclusion that we could proceed with Lake Winnipeg first and take a little more time to study the Churchill River diversion options. In September 1970, the provincial government announced that Lake Winnipeg regulation would proceed as soon as possible, and work on the project started the following year. 